folks, Ariel over here in the garden, which is almost entirely filled with dirt. You can see one bed there where I just have the dirt dumped in and don't have it uh, sifted through yet. I've got to finish that here shortly. But it is a lovely sunny day. Um, four days ago, I think, it still snowed and the ground was white. But now it is like 60 and sunny, and that's kind of how spring tends to go here. And so I am doing some stuff out here. I do not still have most things planted in the garden yet. Some of that I hope to make happen just uh, here in an hour or so. Um, but I wanted to show you something else I'm doing. These, um, well, we're gonna talk about weed control and doing it naturally. So this whole area, if you know, my old garden used to be right there and it was moved because of gopher issues and building new beds and it's sunnier up here. And since I was building raised beds, I could put dirt in them and deal with the fact that there's actually not really any dirt up here. It's almost all rock. But there are a few things that even will grow on almost all rock, like grass. My yard here was never a planted lawn. This was just a wild clearing in the woods and I've just kept it mowed off. So there's a lot of things other than just grass in my yard and um, that is and the grass that's there is wild and that's terrific I, I eat the dandelions I eat the clover I actually have dandelions yesterday I saw the very first one open and today there's like several dozen um, so we finally have dandelions open here and if you've got them in your yard don't spray them remember you can eat them the greens are delicious I like them tossed in with salads I like them sauteed you can make flowers out of the cookies uh, go to the channel homepage and look up dandelion cookies they are delicious um, anyway so that is not an issue but a weed is basically just a plant that is growing where you do not want it. So until last year, there was grass and clover and dandelions and whatever all else growing through here because it was a yard and they were wanted here. Now they're not because I have a garden here and I don't want them to grow up tall. They would tend to hang over into the garden beds, drop seeds and make me more weeds to pull out of there. Um, you know compete for moisture and I just want to be able to walk around my paths plainly without having them full of grass and I don't want to have to mow and weed whack all these paths all year that would just uh, take me a lot of time so now I would like these um, plants to die basically I don't want them here anymore so now they have become a weed but I don't want to obviously use something um, toxic and poisonous around where I'm going to be growing my food so here's what I'm going to do and here my, my end goal is that I want just um, these little bits of wood chips in my pathways, you know, between the garden beds and nothing at all growing. That's my goal. Um, just again for ease of maintenance and for keeping it clean and being able to water and work and not have to mow and maintain that space to keep like these tallest ones already growing up through here already inches above the garden bed and I don't want them dropping grass seeds into the uh, beds that I'm going to then have my time to weed out. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay so my goal here is to make everything in my pathways die and to not poison my vegetables. So this is a natural weed killer that you can find discussed and pinned all over the internet, um, some version of this, and you can find lots of discussions about how awesome it is and lots of discussions that it's a myth and it doesn't work at all. I have used this before successfully but there are a few things that often get missed. It's list is just, you know, use vinegar to kill your weeds. And people say, well, it didn't kill them or it only killed the tops a little bit and then they grew right back. Household vinegar, like if you buy vinegar in the grocery store, um, it's usually 5%. My grocery store sells one labeled as cleaning vinegar that is 6% acid, that is. Um, if you brew your own, you can get slightly varied percentages, but normal um, food vinegar is about 5% acid. Cleaning vinegar is about 6%. This is horticultural vinegar. Um, you can get it at some farm stores, some ranch stores, or order it from Amazon. Um, this is 20% acid. It's still vinegar, it's just more acid, less water. It's still just like vinegar is gonna break apart into oxygen, hydrogen, other things in the soil that are not harmful and don't have a lasting residue like glyphosate and a lot of um, commercial weed killers. But that is a strong acid. You can give yourself an acid burn. You don't want to drink that. You don't want to put it in your food or your salad dressing and you don't want to um, touch it. Hence that I am now not barefoot and uh, wearing a long sleeve shirt, which I actually hate doing because I get hot really quickly. But just while I mix this up, I don't want to splatter that straight vinegar onto my bare skin. What I have here 
This originally was actually a Roundup container. It wasn't purchased by me. This was a friend who's been using these to spray other things for a while, but many, many moons ago, it did have Roundup in it. It comes with a handy little sprayer, but it has been washed out numerous, numerous times over years and used for spraying less poisonous things. Um, so I've got my little sprayer. What I'm going to do is very carefully here, mix my vinegar. I'm not gonna use my fingers to break that seal. So this is a full gallon of vinegar. I'm just gonna mix up a full gallon of this. You could of course do less and put in a little spray bottle. I'm going to pour that in there without splashing it on myself. Um, you know, you could mix up a smaller portion, put in a little spray bottle if you're just covering a little area. I think I'll probably use most of the gallon to do all of my pathways here. Now, another thing um, for this to work is you do want a warm, sunny day, which as you can see, it's pretty warm and sunny. If it's cloudy or overcast, and that's true actually of other commercial weed killers as well, they all work better. If it's hot and sunny, the plants kind of drink more of it in and are, uh, you know, more rapidly affected by the weed killer. So I've emptied my vinegar into there and I'm going to, this is just water from my creek. Um, that's 20% acid, which should be plenty strong enough to uh, kill the weeds. I've heard a lot of people say 10% acid is sufficient. The thing is, if you just go get your 5% acid vinegar from a grocery store, it probably is going to either not affect your weeds or if they're slightly more sensitive ones, you may burn the tops off, but then the, the root will grow back out. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to rinse my, my um, acid gallon here. So I'm gonna be making that just slightly less than 20% acid because I'm diluting it a bit, but still far more than 10%. Um, so that should be plenty strong. Set that up. Now the other two ingredients. This is just dish soap. It's a natural dish soap that I use for my dishes. And I'm gonna put about a good tablespoon in here. Um, what this does is, I never pronounced the word correctly. I think it's called a surface surficant. What you're doing is basically adding, um, and this bottle's almost empty. I should have put it upside down earlier. Um, <laughs> you're breaking, you want the, the soap to just slightly break the surface tension of the water so you don't just have a droplet hit a leaf and just roll straight off. You want it to stay on the leaf. So we're putting just, squirting a good tablespoon of soap in there to um, mix in to help break the surface tension of the water. And then this is orange oil. This would be, you know, um, this is very concentrated, but it's often used for cleaning. You know, it smells like oranges. Um, it's a, one of the more natural cleaning products. I don't personally use it for that. I use it for this. Um, diluted very much. It can be actually used for fertilizing things in the garden, but concentrated enough, it will kill things. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of this in. And that's kind of like a lot of other things. Like I use urine for fertilizing a garden. You put urine on too strong, you can kill all your plants. You dilute it with enough water. It fertilizes them, provides them lots of nitrogen, and they grow like mad. So the, uh, the dose has a big effect on a lot of things. Now I'm just going to take the little sprayer top bit after this and screw it on. And again, you could just use like a little um, hand spritz bottle if you were going to do a, a smaller volume. I just know my hand would have worn out completely if I <laughs> tried to do that on all these pathways. And then this one you just kind of pump to pressurize the spray hose. And since I just filled it, that's going to take a little bit of pumping. You start to feel that with a one like this that you're getting resistance pressure in the handle. And the handle locks down things out of my pathway. So again, I think the reason a lot of people say this doesn't work is they, um, they for one, are using a vinegar that's far too weak. 
and and it's just not effective. So this is about, I think it's like, I'm not looking at a clock, I think it's something like 10.30 a.m. I'm going to just, the sprays, I don't know if the camera is going to show it, a fine mist. Every now and then as I go, I just give the, the bucket a little shake to be sure all the ingredients stay um, mixed up. I'm going to even spray in between my concrete blocks because I don't want that grass growing up and over into my uh, garden beds either. Then out here in the pathways, this does have a pleasant citrusy smell. So I'm just going to lightly spray all this down. Let's go in a neat pattern so I know what I've hit and what I haven't. And again, I am wearing boots um, just because I don't want to get that strong of acid directly on my bare feet. And if you have pets, Burley is taking a nap in his crate right now because I didn't want him to uh, run through this until it dries onto the plant for a minute. So, I have put him uh, in, a, in containment, which he doesn't do a whole lot, but he's fine with taking a nap in there when I have to do something where he can't be around. So, we're going to just hose all this down. This is something else to be aware of. This is not a selective herbicide. It's not a broadleaf killer or a grass killer. It will kill anything. Um, you know, if you spray Roundup glyphosate onto things, it kills broadly things and not grass. For one, I want my grass to now be dead here because now it is a weed because it's where I don't want it. Um, but if you are spraying weeds in your lawn, be aware that this will kill anything it touches. It's not going to just kill the wide leaf things and leave your grass. So, just going to make my way through the garden here. You can see in the camera how bright green these plants look at the moment. And I believe in a couple hours I'll be able to show you how very different they look. And again, I'm going to continue giving this a shake to keep it mixed up. Hitting any of these block insides where I've got weeds trying to come through. So, if you're going to do this, make sure you have a strong enough acid vinegar. Make sure you don't splash it on your skin or onto your pets. You will give yourself an acid burn, but once it dries onto the plants, um, it's, it starts evaporating and you don't have to be concerned that the area is going to remain with a toxic residue. You just don't want to touch the wet, um, full acid vinegar by itself. And uh, make sure you only put it on things that you actually want to die. Don't, you know, spray carelessly around, have it drift onto your veggies or your most valuable roses or something like that because they will die too. Um, so, I'll probably have to do this again at some point through the summer because it's still pretty early in the year and not all the grasses have tried to shoot up roots yet that are going to. But I want to keep, like I said, I want to just make these pathways basically dead areas. So I'm going to keep doing this across the rest of the garden. Um, the other thing to be aware of is a good hot sunny day is helpful because again you want the plant to kind of drink this stuff up. You don't want to just spray it on and then get it washed off in a rainstorm. And there's no rain expected. Our forecasts are often wrong so we could get a thunder shower but it looks like it's going to be warm and sunny. This pl smells pleasantly vinegar and citrusy. And hopefully, by a few hours from now or tomorrow, you're going to see this stuff being dead. Now remember, this is pretty dense grass that's pretty well established and pretty well rooted. It was wild before I moved in here five years ago. I've simply been mowing it off for the last five years, and it was wanted in the yard until this year. Now it's a weed because it's not wanted now that this is a garden. So I'm going to do that. The other, I wanted to talk for a sec about the other, um, similar recipes that I see discussed are one that includes either Epsom salt or table salt. Now chemically there's a whole bunch of things that are salt, sodium chloride, sodium, um, uh, blank on names. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of things chemically that are salt and then there's what we think of as salt that you eat with your food. Anyway, um, I don't know the, uh, maybe somebody with more of a degree in science, uh, chemistry could tell me 
why the Epsom salt may work. I don't quite understand that because Epsom salt is an, uh, a very effective uh, fertilizer for many plants. It's often used in the garden. So I don't quite understand why mixing vinegar and Epsom salt, I think the vinegar would be doing all the killing. I'm not sure what the Epsom salt would be doing other than fertilizing the plant that remains after whatever the vinegar is killed. Um, table salt, however, sodium chloride, will, in a high enough concentration, sterilize ground. Um, you probably are aware of this if you live near salt water. That's why we don't drink salt water. If you water your garden with salt water, it will shortly be dead. Even if you live in a city or an area where there tends to be a lot of sodium naturally in the um, groundwater or whatever, you, I, I have some friends who they can't you know, use their well water to water anything or it will die. Um, and that will not come back until there's been enough time passed, which could be decades or centuries, depending on the rainfall, um, or enough water is applied to basically leach the salt back out of the ground. There's no good way to get salt out of the ground. So be aware that if you put a lot of salt somewhere, um, you may permanently sterilize it for growing all things. So you certainly are not going to want to use that like in a garden bed or anywhere you're going to want to grow. It may be effective if you have an area where you don't want anything to ever grow, like the middle of your gravel driveway or in between blocks on a patio or something where you are realistically never going to want anything to come back through. Um, you can sterilize that soil by adding salt to it. And once I get these weeds um, that are now weeds in my garden pathways killed back, I may actually use a little bit of salt in the pathways because it is almost all rock under here anyway. Um, if you've been following my videos, you know how much rock is under here. It's it's 24 feet solid of round river rock clear down to the creek level down there and then beneath that I, I live in the Rocky Mountains. It's solid rocks. Um, anyway, I, I don't really want anything to ever grow here as long as I'm here. Eventually when I move I will pack up all the concrete blocks, take them with me, kind of knock the garden beds out, spread my now very fertile garden soil over the whole area and the wild things can go back to growing through here. Um, but as long as I'm here, I don't really want anything to grow in the pathways, so I may consider using some salt there. But you do not want to use table salt, sodium, um, in an area if you ever want something to come back through that dirt. That will permanently sterilize it, which, as I said, may be helpful in a few places. But you definitely don't want to go spraying weeds between your flowers with a mix like that. So that's something else to be aware of. So this is what I'm using, and I'm just going to uh, cover the rest of the garden, and then I'll show you what it looks like when they start dying. Okay folks, this is approximately two hours after I sprayed. You can already see from the same camera angle how nothing in those pads looks bright green anymore. In fact, even the grass in between the wood there, wood chips, is all curling up and turning gray-brown. Look down this pathway. you know, clover, just everything's looking pretty killed. Hi again. As you can see, this is a little bit later. This is actually a full month after I filmed the first part of that. I wanted to wait and share this so I had good evidence to show you of how this works since, as I said, I've seen a lot of a lot of conflicting uh, info flying around the internet that this is awesome and it'll work and it's cheap and it's easy and it's totally safe and that no it doesn't work at all it doesn't kill anything so as you can see now a whole lot of things have grown in the beds and a whole lot of nothing is growing in the pads so let me give you a little closer look at a month later now i have sprayed this a second time it did actually thunderstorm quite violently um maybe four hours after i had sprayed it that first round when i was talking to the camera uh, but it seemed to be enough time that everything had dried on and really had, had gotten a good kill on that. But as I said, it was so early in the year that a lot of things hadn't sprouted yet. So some more new things sprouted and uh, so I did give it another round and my pathways are looking good. Now the one other thing I was going to mention is my preferred method of weed control is generally deep mulching them and burying them completely out of sight. I have used this effectively for quite a long time in pathways and gardens. The only reason I don't want to do that here is because I'm really liking having my raised beds because it's handy to be able to work in a bed and just, you know, sit here on the block and, and pull a weed. Um, but to effectively deep mulch enough to kill things like grass, you're probably going to need 
at least six inches and I have plenty of wood chips around I could do that but my beds are only eight inches high and if I deep mulch them with six inches I no longer have a raised bed I have a, a ground level bed and so just for that reason I didn't want to in this case use a deep mulch so let's take a little closer look at how the weeds are looking and what kind of a kill we got well first we have a beautiful dog in the path he's not a weed but as you can see looking up and down that path there's pretty much nothing else green and so on through the garden. Now the only thing that I do see a little bit of regrowth on is some of the grasses. Um, as with any weed, you can see there's a little bit of green trying to push back out there and I can actually just hand weed that at this point because the plant's pretty weak. Uh, grass is harder to kill than broadleaf plants just in general. I've never understood people's obsession with growing lots of a uh, fairly useless thing around their house when there's many useful and edible and pretty things one could grow. But anyway, um, all the broadleaf stuff in the pathways has died completely and most of the grass is dead and that is what I wanted to have happen. I want to go over here and show you, just for example, I usually just cut them out. Thistles are actually edible but I, that's one a lot of people want to get rid of. So let's take a look at that. And just for comparison on thistles, that thistle now a month after spraying, this is to address that people say it doesn't work, it doesn't kill the root, things grow right back out. You can see how it is still looking deader than a door now. Nothing at all is coming out of the center of that. While one was actually a little smaller when, when this one was sprayed than the sprayed one is looking happy and healthy and tall. So that, that gives you an example of this would, this would be even bigger than that had it not been sprayed. And it is totally dead, still dead, the whole way to the center, nothing at all coming back. So there you go. That is my experience with using a vinegar-based, more natural weed killer that is uh, less toxic to the general environment and leaves less residue poisoning plants and animals and people for uh, possibly generations in the soil and and the effectiveness and that's what I wanted to show you. Now again be cautious with strong acid vinegars. Uh, while they are wet they are certainly have the potential to burn you or other things and um, a lot of people say this is way cheaper, you know, just buy a cheap bottle of vinegar, it's cheaper than buying a jug of Roundup. If you're actually going to buy horticultural vinegar, I'm not sure that you will find that it's actually less expensive uh, financially. It's going to be much less expensive to your health. So I think that's worth it, even if it costs the same. But that's what my garden is looking like, and I'm very happy with the fact that I don't have weeds and such sprouting up in my pathways to um, drop seeds into my garden beds. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.